You're talking to a motivated seller. What do you say? Everybody thinks I have this crazy script, uh, this crazy thing in my head of what I tell a seller, right? This crazy like thing I've memorized and I see these crazy lines and I'm reading off a piece of paper. Guys, when I talk to a motivated seller, I am, <laughs> I'm a big dummy sometimes. I literally just think of one thing. It's like one word or it's like an acronym, MCTP. This is the craziest thing in the world. So many people get so confused with this, but I don't know how to say it the easiest way possible. I just say MCTP. And what, what, what is this jumbled mess of a word? What is this? What does this mean? What, what, what's MCTP? So MCTP literally stands for motivation, condition, time frame, and price. That is what MCTP means, okay? So let's take it from the top, motivation. So when I'm talking to a seller, when I think of MCTP, I think of motivation. So I'm gonna ask the seller, hey, Mr. Seller, why are you looking to sell the property? That is what motivation is. Like. There's no if, ands, buts, cahoots around it. Mr. Seller, why are you looking to sell the property? I want to know what your actual reason to sell the property is. And y'all see my, my live cold calls. Like when I do my live cold calling out here, I, I, th I think people think I, I come up with these scripts on my own. But like I literally do MCTP. I, hey, outside of you listing this on Zillow and the price here, I mean, why would we be even looking to sell the property? It looks like a nice house. I, I could say it a million different ways. But it's all trying to get one linear point of why do you want to sell the house? Most people live in houses. So why don't you want to live in this house anymore, right? Do you not like the location? Do you have a movement job? Or do you want to be near family? Or do you want to get out of the cold? Like, What's the situation and what is the true reason why you're looking to sell the property? And really, when you get to the root of this, you can tell if it's going to be a good deal or not in wholesaling. I've always found you're going to tell if it's a good deal or not by just the motivation. If there's one question or factor I can tell somebody or ask somebody to see if I could, if it's a deal or not, always through motivation. And unfortunately, I've had motivated sellers where they had really great motivation, but it ended up not being a deal. And I've had deals where it didn't seem like it was a motivation, but I keep asking questions in other ways and I, I get the true motivation. Like I remember one deal where the person says, why do you want to sell? They're like, oh, I just, I just want to sell it. I, I just don't want this house. Why don't you want the house? Eh, I just, I just don't want it. And they were really like combative. And that's sort of the, best way I can describe them. So they were being pretty competitive with me. And I just, I couldn't get a read on this person, you know? And I just asked like, why don't you just list the house? You'll get the most money for it if you list it. I was just like sick of this, right? And they're like, oh, I don't want to deal with a stinking, stinking realtor. I got to sell this thing within two weeks because of this, this, and this. And that seller just wasn't good at communicating. But I asked that motivation question in a different way. And by me asking that in a different way, it actually led me to getting the true motivation. So it's really important condition guys. Remember at freelancing.com, I really break all, all this down, but I just really quick, like I just wanted to condition the property. So what is the property? How's the roof, AC repairs, the flooring, everything like that. Like, I just want to know what the general condition of the property is. I don't want to get cute. I don't want to get too fancy on this. I just want to know what the condition of the property is here. Right. And I think so many people get really confused on this and they think they have to like master this. Right. And you don't really got to master this. Like it, it's, it's actually not as hard as it seems, right? The next one here is time frame. When are they looking to sell the property? Are you looking to sell the property in a month? Are you looking to sell it in a year? Is this something within a couple of weeks you got to do, right? Motivation should match this a lot. Uh, but sometimes I, I found it gets a little tricky. So uh, more or less, you got to figure that out. And then lastly, it's just, it's not, it's the least important question, but it's price. So how much are you looking to sell the property for? That's pretty much it. What's the ballpark range? How do you do it, right? And Kind of like I said before, when you're talking to these motivated sellers, you just got to be yourself. And I think so many people, they're not themselves when they do the scripts. And if you can just be yourself and have that confidence, it's going to do well. And the most important thing I could tell you is your confidence when talking to a motivated seller is going to be way more important than any type of script possible. Confidence beats scripts. Let me say that one last time. Confidence beats scripts scripts. It is more important to be confident than to have the right script. I'd rather you have a decent script that's not good, more or less, and just have that absolute killer confidence, that conviction in your soul that you know what you're doing, you know you can help the seller out, and you're here to help them out. That's going to give the best results. Confidence is always going to be the script. And I think so many people try to hide the script 
in their confidence and they, they try to have a good script and they try to beat that with confidence. And uh, the honest truth is no, that is never the point. That is not what we're trying. That's not what we're trying to do. And it's just, it's completely different. Right. And the next port, I, I think so many people have to understand with that type of script is like, it's more important how you say it versus what you say. Right. And what I mean by this is how you say a word is going to be so much more important than what you say. And really, I think so many people get this confused. So it's like, I, I always use this analogy with a waiter, right? So if you have kids and they're deathly allergic to peanuts, right? And you ask the waiter like, hey, Mr. Waiter, is this souffle dessert thing, does it have peanuts in it? My kids can't have peanuts. And, uh, uh, peanuts. and uh, the waiter says, yeah, it, it, it doesn't have peanuts in it. Uh, like, you're not going to feel good about that. Versus the waiter that says, no, there's no... Wait, I got to say it the right way they say it. No, th there's no peanuts in that. Boom, right? Like, it's just the way you say it. It's going to change a lot for you. I think so many people, uh, they, they truly believe that the script's going to be everything. And a lot of people use the script as a crutch. And that script is not going to be the good crutch because your confidence is going to be you actually going out here and doing it. And I hate to say this, but this is absolutely true. If you're a blob and like non-confident mess, your seller's going to sniff it out. And if you're not confident in buying somebody's house, they don't want to sell to you. They're, they're selling their house for a discount based on certainty. And if you're not confident in buying their house, they cannot be certain you're going to buy the house. And they sell based on speed and convenience and most importantly, certainty. And if you cannot provide that certainty with confidence, you will not do well. And you should, if you have the cash buyer lined up, like you should have all the confidence in the world on this. I just, it makes no sense to me, but yeah. Last but not least, I think when you see some of my content, when I teach wholesaling real estate, uh, and also when you see me do wholesaling real estate, I keep it simple. I uh, really, when you complicate this business, that's when you really get in trouble. I always famously say this, but gurus complicate wholesaling real estate to sell you something to simplify it. And versus me, I absolutely just, just simplify it. And that's pretty much it. The only way to teach you guys wholesaling real estate is to simplify it. So the gurus advise a really good spectrum if you watch every guru video but outside of our channel right you're really going to find that they complicate the business right they make it really confusing they don't really tell you what to say they don't give you the scripts and the funniest part about that is they do it on purpose and they show well if you join the course it gets a lot easier and the thing is i'm going to give you everything to make it easy nobody ever talks about the hard part they are hard about taking that action right and the guru won't tell you until you pay 10 grand and they got all their money and they can't refund their credit card, right? It just it's, it's so funny, but guys, you have to keep it simple. It'll help you out so much. So let's kind of get in the script really quick I used to get the appointment and then uh, close the deal. We'll break it down, guys. If you want to comment below any questions, I'd love to answer them. I usually always get to most of the comments on here and definitely uh, the one-on-one. So, uh, so get MCTP. Before you set that appointment, you need to get the MCTP. I think so many people struggle with that. And you have to understand to get the appointments, I'm telling you, you need to know what their motivation, condition, time frame, price, because if you're dealing with an unmotivated seller, you're wasting your time and you should not be wasting your time in wholesaling real estate. Like what's the point of wasting your time? That, that, guys, that will give you no deals. Do not be wasting your time. If you're dealing with somebody that doesn't want to sell the property, you don't want to buy it, especially in this market. Okay, guys. So what's the script, right? So if you get the motivation, condition, time frame, price, it's pretty easy. But hey, Mr. Mr. or Mrs. Seller, when would be a good time for me to go and see the property? So when's a good time for me to go out here and see the property? That's it. Like that's the script. Don't make it complicated, okay? Because once you complicate it, your confidence is going to go down. Confidence goes down. The seller is going to deal with you, right? You are not going to do well. And then you set the appointment. So let's say you set it for you know next Tuesday, right? So on the day before, maybe on like a Monday, we're going to do what we call conditioning the seller. So we can condition the seller for a yes or no decision. So how does this go? What's sort of the script on this? But pretty much the script is, I don't want to waste your time, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Seller. So before I go out there, I just want to ask you, are you ready to make a yes or no decision on selling the property today? Or are you, are you ready to make a yes or no decision when I go out and see the property? If you don't ask this question, you're going to get the worst possible answer potentially on your appointments. So when I go and give an offer on a seller, there's three possible answers they can give to you. Yes and no are the most common ones. The worst one possible is what we call a maybe. So yes, no, or maybe. Those are the three possibilities a seller can give to you. I've always found the maybe is the worst because you can't get over a maybe. 
maybe creates time and time will kill your deal. So you do not want that. Uh, that is not how you want to do this business. Okay. So just be really careful out here, guys. Uh, make sure you say it the right way. And really when you go in the appointments, you're over the phone, you're doing virtual wholesaling, then we can, we can sort of get into the quote unquote closing lines, right? And the closing lines are really simple. Uh, these are the lines when you go see the property and you talk to them, you get all the information, then you kind of get into giving the offer, closing the deal. There's honestly, I'd say four, I'd say five, but let's, let's call it five closing methods and uh, we'll break it all down. So the first one, my favorite one, everyone kind of hears me talk about this, but this is really the good cop, bad cop approach. And the good cop, bad cop approach is basically me being the good cop, my basically my partner, cash buyer, or even my own partner in my wholesaling business being the bad cop. So for example, if I'm going out here and I'm like, hey, Mr. Seller, you know, I talked to my partner, John, and he told me he wanted to buy this thing for around $90,000. And he said, I shut up there. The point of why I shut up there is because when I don't say anything, I'm going to get the seller's reaction to what I just offered them. And what you're going to find out pretty quick is if the seller's not okay with it, they're going to be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh, this is so crazy. This is ridiculous. I can't do that. That is, There's no way I can do that. And then you can kind of go back and say, well, that was John. He's different than me, right? Like we're partners. We got to discuss it. But I mean, what, what works for you? See, you kind of let the cat out of the bag, but just in case you can kind of backtrack from that. And that's going to give you the best results possible. I think so many wholesalers, they're just going there with a cold offer. And if the seller says no, or they're offended by the offer, they get kicked out, they lose on the deal. And this is pretty much one of the most surefire ways not to get in trouble with a motivated seller. And it's just going to help you out the most. I, I just think so many people, uh, they don't do this method and it's very important for you guys to do it, right? The next one here is the low ball with reasons, right? Hey, Mr. Seller, based on the amount of work I have to do on the property, based on uh, the roofing, basically the lawn I got to do on this and all the maintenance, I got to get rid of this tree, really got to update the kitchens. It's going to cost me $20,000, $30,000. I mean, based on all that, Mr. Seller, I'm probably going to be closer to $90,000 on this. Now you give reasons. It's not a bad offer, right? I prefer the good cop, bad cop. This is why I showed it first, but there's other ways to do it. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, again, you can use the dollar bill method, which I don't really have a problem with. I, I've used it plenty of times and definitely works, right? So the dollar bill method, guys and gals, is basically the method of you saying, hey, Mr. Seller, how much are you looking to sell the property for? Oh, I have no idea how much I want to sell the property for. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> would you sell the do would you sell the deal for a dollar, right? And I think I botched that one, but like, hey, Mr. Seller, I mean, <laughs> would you sell this deal for a dollar? Or would you sell this property for a dollar? And the reason is because once they say that, you say it so comically, they're like, no, I, I won't sell it for a dollar. Well, would you sell it for $2? No, $3? Four? I, I, I'm not selling it for $3. Well, you definitely have a price in mind that it's not a dollar. And then you kind of go from there and negotiate from there. Uh, and then the last one, probably one of my favorite ones is the volley method. Uh, the volley method is actually, it works really well. I think a lot of people get really confused about the volley method. Uh, the volley method is kind of like you're playing volleyball. So, hey, Michelle, how much are you looking to sell the property for? Oh, you know, I have no idea how much I want to sell the property for. Well, I mean, if you did know, what would it be? Oh, I don't know. Well, if you were going to sell it, what would it be? Obviously, you have a price in mind. You just you keep volleying it back and getting the price first or just ask them what the price is and then boom, they'll give it to you. Negotiate from there, meet in the middle, get logistics on there, then you're good to go in there. It's really important, guys, that you use those type of closing tactics. The ones I always see is, let me talk to my financing department. I'll, so we'll go talk to them and we'll see if you qualify for the cash offer on this. Day. Guys, that don't work. All right. I think so many people try that. And it, guys, it, it is literally one of the worst ones. It, it really separates the personal touch on this business where it ain't going to be the best one on here. So uh, the last and probably one of the most important parts you guys have to understand this is, and I think not a lot of people talk about this, but. Sometimes you just have to walk from a deal. If the numbers don't work, if it's above your MAO, your MAO is your max allowable offer. Let me say that one last time. MAO is your max allowable offer, your maximum allowable offer, the most you would allow to offer the person. 
Once you go above the max allowable offer, that is no longer a max. Okay, that's not the maximum. So just understand this, guys and gals, that like you can say what you're create that MAO and don't go above it, right? It's like when I say create a schedule, stick to it, make that MAO and don't go above it because in this market, you can wait people out. This is all part of the follow up game. If they want to sell for too much, have a great day. I can't do that. Basically, so hey, I can do 90. Oh, I can't go above 130. Okay, well, 90 is my offer, and let me know if the, that works. Okay, okay, that doesn't work. Call them back in a week. Well, are you ready to go for 90? If not, I, I can't do this deal. Oh, I can't do 90. All right. Well, next time you talk to me, my offer will not be 90 because of the interest rates. Everything is probably going to be closer to 80, maybe even 75. And then boom, they'll call you back. Uh, usually they get a little more desperate, and then boom, you get it for that low price. I'm telling you guys so much. If you do not, guys, if you go above your MA, you're not going to do deals. And I think so many people get really stressed out over that. So many people get so uh, sad over that. But I tell you guys straight up, walk away. Sometimes you got to walk away. Okay. It's like playing poker to a point. If you walk away, you'll be fine. So guys, that's pretty much it to a point. That That is really my script. I, I just, I can go into a little more. I, I can complicate this thing like crazy, but I really don't want to complicate this business for you guys. I truly believe those are the scripts that work and those are the scripts I highly recommend for you guys.